Good evening everybody, you are watching part 2 of my Radical Plants vs Zombies 2 Potatoes Only series. Last time we attempted Ancient Egypt, the Scurvy Whores of the Pirate Seas, and the Chicken Uprising of the 1850s. For the most part, we didn't even break a sweat, but only a few levels made me want to pile drive a newborn child off of a cliff. In this episode, we are going to attempt Frostbite Caves and the Lost City, aka the two worlds that nobody gives a shit about. Will I beat every single level, or will I have to jump into an active volcano and hire this guy right here to dig my grave for me? All questions will be answered on short notice. Let's begin. Alright, day one of the Frostbite Caves. I'm sure it would be better to get Frostbite than to do this, but the level gimmicks that are presented include these tiles here that force zombies onto other lanes. And the cold wind that can freeze our taters into weapons of mass destruction. No, seriously. Have you ever chucked a frozen potato directly at someone's head? Because let me tell you, it fucking hurts. But as day one comes to an end, we beat it, and... Oh yeah, I forgot about you. The hot potato is a freebie that will help us quite a lot in the freezing depths that is the Frostbite Caves. You plop that sucker on an ice block and watch him as he melts away and unfreezes our holy potatoes. Also, did you know that it can melt the squid fucks in Big Wave Beach? How the hell am I only just finding this out? But onwards onto day 2. You will see a lot of frozen veggies throughout this world that are pre-planted for me. But because I'm just so awesome, I do not need them. It was easy, but the final wave caught me off guard with a shit ton of zombies. If you remember from last time, all I really have to do is bunch them up with a sweet potato and kill them all with 1-2 to two potato mines. Day 3 was a conveyor belt level. It consisted of pea shooters, pea shooters, and even more pea shooters. It was designed to teach us how to use Hurricane. Goaded plant, by the way. Day 4 we get introduced to these guys that throw snowballs at your plants to try and freeze them. Like some sort of ice junkie. They also walk really slow, so they will be harder to bunch up and kill. It's also not often you'll see them eat stuff rather than freezing it. They will pose as a problem later, but as of now we beat the level. On day 5 we have a conveyor belt level where we have to make use of the pepper pulse ability to unfreeze the surrounding cabbages. Also I had no idea that they implemented a snowstorm gimmick. It's basically the same as sandstorm from earlier but we hardly see it ever utilized in any of these levels. Apart from that, it was fun, and we won. Day 6 was rough. To simply lay it out for you, it was just one of those levels that had an absolute cluster fest of zombies for no reason. Before and at the final wave, I had to use a lot of my lawnmowers to do the job because of how much shit there is. I actually almost lost towards the end, but had saved up a plant food to kill the last batch of zombies. But day 7 wasn't too bad. I always thought imps were fast, but in this world, they move like snail speed, like look how slow they are. If I place a sweet potato here in the middle, then all the zombies from every lane will go there due to the ice blocks moving the zombies closer. And that was mostly the strategy I used to win. It's day 8 and we are already on our third conveyor belt level. It was pretty lazy. All it was was just pepper pulse and bonk choice. I know I said we won't see many snowstorms, but Jesus Christ, there were 10 snowstorms in this one level. 10. I know it's not a big deal, but man, that just doesn't happen. Day 9 was when the dildo birds make their appearance. They tend to always think that they're cool and different because they fly past the ice blocks instead of moving on them, but no. You're not that guy. You would assume that I'm forced to use Levitator because they can fly, but thankfully they spend more time grounded, making it possible for me to blow them up with my potato mines. Unlike someone. This wasn't easy though. The final wave had bring out so many birds that it was impossible for me to blow all of them up because of their speed. I thankfully had all my mowers left, so I just raised the white flag and let them all get hit. Day 10 is another conveyor belt level. But this time it's pea shooters and chard guards. Wow, that's just spectacular. Okay, but be for real, what do you want me to say? These levels don't even count towards the challenge. I mean, if you're interested, we won. They're not that hard. Sorry for insulting you, Frostbite Caves, because apparently day 11 was like the hardest level ever. First of all, just look how much shit there is. Not only do I have to monitor all these zombies, but also have to deal with multiple birds at once. And, oh my god, these birds just... Look at this bullshit. They start flying the literal second the potato mines blow up. It is critical that this doesn't happen, but the amount of times this has gotten me killed is just unimaginable. Oh, and did I mention that there are also four fucking waves? It took me about an hour until I realized that it just ain't gonna happen. So allow me to add a special party member to help us. The teleport potato mine is probably our best weapon out of everything we've got. You place it down wherever you please and it teleports the five closest zombies to your house towards its location and blows up in a 3x3 radius. But just like the levitator, it is a CDM plant, meaning they are quite overpowered, therefore you won't see much use of it unless it's necessary. But of course, with our newly juiced up potato, we shred through day 11. 
We have to plan our defense on day 12. And of course I tried the usual setup, which worked surprisingly well. And that's probably because it was a very short level, there weren't many zombies, and the birds couldn't escape us this time. However, at the end, all of our potato mines decided it was a great time to start freezing up. That is okay, because Hot Potato bailed me out a few times, but I really had to rely on the lawn mowers and the sweet potato store to kill the last group of zombies. Day 13 has it so we can't let the zombies trample through the flowers. I just survived for quite some time and there were a fair bit of zombies. However, it was the final wave that kept on screwing me. Not only were there a fuck ton of imps, but there was also a gargantua, and if he takes damage, he throws like three more imps ahead of him. Like bruh, come on. I died a few more times and I did attempt it quite a bit, and it might be doable without cedium plants, but I did use teleportator to help me win this one. On day 14, we have to survive with the given plants. And if you think I'm going to beat this level using only a hot potato, then you must be a registered psychopath. It's funny because this actually does count as a physically impossible level. Like what am I going to do? Place it on this one split pea to try and kill everything? Believe me, I did try, it does not work. So the only thing I can do is just beat the level as intended. Day 15 kind of sucked too. We have to protect these pepper pulps, which turned out to be way more difficult than I thought. They hardly do anything with their slow fire rate, and it doesn't help that I have to put my focus on these dildo birds while having to kill all the zombies. And it's not like I can just lure all the shit away with sweet potato, because every lane has these ice tiles that lead towards the endangered plants. I died far too many times, so I had no choice but to use teleportator to help me win this one. Day 16 is yet another conveyor belt level. At least this one is actually kind of fun, because we get to take down several gargantuas. But really, that's about it. We are basically still using the same plants as before, like they could have at least switched it up a bit. Day 17, we get introduced to these bozos. What they will do is shove any ice blocks that is in front of them, which is kinda annoying because if they get pushed on an active mine, it will explode and spawn more shit. And I need room to place my potatoes. They weren't that bad here, but will be a huge threat in later levels. Oh, and in case you're wondering, you do not have to kill the imps that are frozen inside. The level just ends if they are the only thing remaining. Day 18, we have another fucking conveyor belt level. But hey, they switched it up by giving us bloomerangs this time. Yippee! But that's just like saying you played in the NBA, but you were the basketball. Exactly like my boy Citrion. I do like Citrion, but I did not like this level. Day 19 was a dangerously close level. The only real way I can deal with these guys is to either lure them away from ice blocks with sweet potato, or just plant food them. However, these two right here are a devastating combo. This is because he can freeze your plants, and straight away the other dickhead can just push them. My mowers was what made this doable, because the ice blocks kind of screwed me over, having nowhere reliable for me to place potato mines. But I only just had enough room for me to win. Day 20 was nuts. It was a quick level, but what made it difficult was the entire top and bottom lanes being covered in ice blocks. I lost a few times, and I don't really know what I did differently, but I eventually beat it. I mostly just let the lawnmowers kill everything at the end. I clutched up hard as well. It's easy to miss a zombie that is behind the ice blocks, so what I did was hot potato where he was standing and use plant food to get him. Day 21 is another conveyor belt level. Okay, this is getting ridiculous, but at least we get to make use of Fire Pea Shooter and Snapdragon. I think these piss easy levels are just prepping me for what's to come. Day 22. Oh, you've got to be joking. The weasels are a huge pain in the ass. As soon as they get blown up, all the weasels will come running in, and it basically means we automatically lose. But, as you would expect, we are forced into using Levitator to clear these types of levels. At least they're showing up later in the world. Day 23, we have to protect 5 endangered charred guards. You would think that because of their defensive properties and their ability to kill weasels would make this easy, but no. This shit was like rocket science. The snowstorm spawned zombies on top of the charred guards. A shit ton of zombies and weasels kept coming in to the point where they had lost all of their leaves. So I had to resort to Levitator, and they blitzed through them in seconds. We have to produce sun on day 24. It was a bit tricky because our sunflowers kept getting frozen over, but of course, the weasels have to ruin everything again. I actually noticed one key difference to the weasel heads that the chicken wranglers don't have. The chickens will release as soon as they touch a sweet potato, but the weasel heads will actually just sit there and eat it, so we can at least store them out if we need to. When I tried with levitators, it was actually still a challenge because they kept getting frozen over. Look how funny they look when they get frozen mid-animation. It doesn't even stay in the ice block. But because they are just such good plants, we still get the dub. Day 25, say it with me kids, a conveyor belt level, hell yeah! 
This time we are given Roto Beggars, which is a pretty underrated plant if you ask me. As well as some Pepper Pults for backup. And because of this, the zombies stood no chance. Alright, day 26. What do you get when you combine Dildo Birds, Weasels, and four waves of bullshit? You get some Scrambled Brains seasoned with salt and pepper with a side of fuck you. I really hate to be boring, but this is most guaranteed a Levitator level. And you can bet your buckets that we asserted our dominance on these frozen dipshits. Day 27 is up there for one of the most difficult levels ever. Like, oh my god, we have to protect three endangered Roto Beggars. And that sucks because all the frozen tiles will lead the zombies towards their location. But what made this really hard were these big ass caveman looking dudes. They would practically fill up the entire stage with ice blocks. I did try melting them, but they spawn imps and they would trigger potato mines which could otherwise be used for someone else. And as you can see, I don't have much room to place potatoes. My best bet is placing a sweet potato here to bunch them all up and explode them. But the problem is these motherfuckers back here, who will freeze the sweet potato causing everyone to walk right past it instead. Oh and if you thought that was it, oh no. There were multiple birds that kept screwing me, approximately 1 million imps and 2 gargantuas. I spent more time on this level alone than any other one because I just kept getting closer and closer but saw no success. I had no planned food left going into the final wave, and I would always get screwed over. When I say this is frustrating, I mean it. It's more frustrating than running into a wall with an erection but breaking your nose first. It's that bad. If you are really lucky, it might be doable, but as of now, I beat it with Teleportato, and even that was tough. We have to plan our defense on day 28. Our usual setup didn't work too good because of the sheer number of weasels just blazing through our minds like it's nothing. All I had to do was have one row of levitators. It was still a little tricky because basically everything was getting frozen, but Hot Potato helped us heaps keeping everything intact, so we end up winning just like the epic gamers that we are. Day 29 was a little bit of a letdown. We have to survive with the given plants, and all I did was put Roto Beggar and Fire Pea Shooter in a crisscross pattern, and won fairly easily. I mean, that's about it. I wish it was more climatic, but less work for me, I guess. Now onto the boss battle. This is up there with one of my favourites. Don't get me wrong, you would have to have zero brain cells to lose, but the fact that we get some fun plants to use, and he covers himself up with an ice barrier, makes it pretty enjoyable in my opinion. It takes quite some time, but we ultimately beat it and get the key to the lost city. They also left behind this note. I'm not entirely sure what it means, but I'm sure someone can translate. Anyway, time for the lost city. I don't know why this world has 32 levels, but hopefully we can plow through it with our potato prowess, just like the spectacular creatures that we are. The only world gimmick added were these golden tiles, but because potatoes are somehow cheaper than bottles of water, we won't be utilizing the sun tiles that much. As usual, day one is a total snooze fest, but it was trickier than I thought. I know we are approaching harder worlds, but for the first level, this was a lot of zombies. Lost City Day 2 was actually pretty dynamic. We dig up the pre-planted red stingers and we get introduced to the parachute rain. Which isn't too bad, we just have to prepare for when they arrive. And the parachute rain did happen a few times, and there were zombies in every lane basically at all times. The difficulty was kinda there, and it made for an enjoyable level. Day 3 was our first conveyor belt level. If you thought Frostbite Caves had so many of these, Lost City is no different. So I guess the complaining will have to come to an end, because it's probably very annoying. But this level right here teaches us how to use Lava Guava. And we absolutely gust a blast the ever-living shit out of these zombies. It was low-key kinda fun. Day 4 was pure pain and agony. Not only do we get introduced to this angry groundskeeper who should probably not be anywhere near a school, but there were also parachute rains every 2 seconds, and it just got to the point where I wanted to jump head first straight into a metal ceiling fan at maximum speed. This is because we are already on day 4 and the unrealistic amount of zombies had my timbers shivering. I only won by a slither, had to lure all the zombies to the remaining mowers, and only just killed the last few. Day 5 is another heavily inspired conveyor belt level where we have to use red stingers and these guys. I don't know what the fuck they're called, but they shoot stuff I guess. And like, zombies are over there and we also get Cherry Bomb, he's pretty cool I guess. Day 6 was fine. Just like this whole world, it was pretty average. Not having too little or too much zombies to worry about. One thing I did notice though is that the shovel zombies have increased speed. And as you can see here, he caught up to the other zombies and died with them which is a fun strategy you could utilize. Day 7 was easy at first, but later got a little tense towards the final wave. With the abundance of parachute rains and weirdly spread out zombies, the shovel guys also completely counter sweet potato, as I can't bunch zombies up with them. 
We also get introduced to the Umbrella Zombies, but they literally do nothing. Another thing too is that instead of digging up Imitator, you can see for a split second that he just whacks at it with a shovel. I'm not sure why, but that's pretty funny. On day 8, we have to survive with the given plants. It was rather enjoyable because of the shovel and umbrella guys have a wombo combo thing where only one of these plants can hit the respected targets. We as well had to prevent zombies from trampling the flowers, which made for a fun challenge. Also, don't ask why I have a level 8 iceberg lettuce. I was trying to get a plant to a max level for shits and gigs, but gave up. Day 9 is another conveyor belt level. It was literally just me using Snapdragon to kill everything, and like, that's basically it. Also, I'm sorry if at times the video looks bad, because sometimes my game decides to run like a PowerPoint slideshow presentation and drops my frames like there's no tomorrow. Nothing notable happened on day 10, besides at the halfway point where we had a painstaking amount of zombies out of nowhere. I had to plant food clutch a few times and used up all of my lawnmowers. We won by a slither. But apart from that, like, nothing's really going on. You know, Lost City better step up its game, just saying. No, I didn't mean it like that. I'm getting sick of airborne zombies. I mean, if you couldn't guess, on day 11, all was going well until Mr. Dragonfly decided to zoom in here and discard all of my lawnmowers. I mean, it was working until the final wave where I had just ran out of mowers, ultimately dying to them. This marks the first level in Lost City where I have to use a Cedium plant. And the Levitator just flung everything into the next dimension. Day 12 was one of the most enjoyable levels so far. We had to produce sun. I was going to try not using sunflowers because we had golden tiles, but 4000 is a lot of sun and I didn't want to overcomplicate things. It wasn't overcrowded with zombies, but what made this level interesting is that throughout the level, there was one dragonfly in each lane, and because I couldn't do anything, my mowers had to do the job for me. On the second wave, I only had one lawnmower, and two dragonflies were coming, so I lured them both to one side with Sweet Potato, and had my last mower kill them. Thankfully, there were no more after that, and towards the end, we have two gargantuas running it straight into our minefield, earning us a well-deserved victory. Day 13 is a conveyor belt level. Man, this world sucks. All these worlds are based on time periods. Is Lost City even a time period? Sure, there are abandoned cities out there, but they linger around forever. I think Lost City is supposed to be based around the Aztec era. I mean, the buildings do have some similarities. I don't know, they should have just done Vikings or some shit. That would have been way cooler. Day 14, we have to survive with the given plants. All we are doing is placing these guys here and using Lava Guava to unleash its load all over these Parasol Parasites. That is literally it. I get what they were trying to do, but it doesn't land for me. We have to protect the endangered plants on day 15. And it was a fun challenge. Our potato mines made short work on the incoming zombies. This dickhead kept on yeeting my plants into the stratosphere. Unfortunately, these plants, fucking so irrelevant, I don't even know their name. Multiple times they would kill a dragonfly and have the zombie spawn directly on top of it and get eaten, causing me to retry. It is okay though, because all I had to do was lure it away, and soon enough, we beat the level. Day 16 is another conveyor belt level where we have to use the same old plants that we've seen a hundred times. Holy shit, there are six gargantuas. Oh wait, never mind, false alarm. The game gives you three cherry bombs. It's easy as fuck. Okay, well, that just happened. Day 17, we get introduced to the importers. And they be looking like me in year 7 with that big ass backpack on. But what they will do is place down a tent that occasionally spawns zombies, which is kinda annoying because we need to savor our potato mines for more important stuff. The dragonflies did keep screwing with me and triggered my mowers, but if I lure them correctly then the level is a piece of cake. Day 18. Did we not just already have a conveyor belt level? <sighs> you know what? I think it's question time. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, how do you like your potatoes served? Do you like them baked? Boiled or mashed? You guys should all fight about it in the comments below. I will find you. Day 19 sucked balls. There were so many importers who kept on spawning other zombies and there were too many dragonflies for me to count. Put them both together and you get the Great Depression. Lawnmowers, what's that? You're dead. I did try with Levitator, but something I haven't mentioned yet is that if these importers place down their tents, it is pretty much a guaranteed restart. Not because of the zombies spawning out of them, but because we physically cannot get rid of them no matter what, and they will endlessly spawn zombies. The mowers can simply destroy them, but my strategy is to prioritize my potato mines and plant food in their direction. Or, in some cases, I would stall and wait for Levitator to kill them. Doing this caused me to win. 
Aside from the cool golden Z, day 20 was virtually the same as the last one, except way more difficult. There were a lethal number of zombies, including dragonflies, importers, parachute rains, imps, and shovel dudes. Everything you can think of was on my screen, and I didn't have the ability to counter all of it. But as always, Levitator had my back and smoked through them. On day 21, we have to survive with the given plants, and essentially, I have to kill everything with Toadstool. I think this plant is absolutely garbage. Why should I have to pay 200 sun just for a zombie to slowly die, when I can spend 25 sun on a precious potato mine that insta-kills? Oh, but you get sun afterwards, yeah mate, no one cares, and Chomper is no exception to this either. Day 22, we have to survive with the given plants. Again. On this level, the trap tiles make their appearance, which is something I completely forgot about because they only appear on like, three levels, and one of those is the boss stage. If you couldn't tell, the level is designed for you to trigger the traps, and having rolling boulders massacre every zombie in sight made it out to be a piss easy level. We get introduced to these guys who swing on ropes on day 23, and they have to be a contender for probably the most forgettable zombie ever. Like we've already seen people who swing on ropes in pirate seas. Aside from that, this level was fucking brutal. Every zombie you could imagine was just wryly reading me in the asshole, and there was most definitely nothing I could do. So I busted out Teleportator Mine to do the job for me. I also learned that Teleportator can blow up flying zombies. So yeah, that's fun. We can't let the zombies trample the flowers on day 24. It wasn't very hard, but it got a little nerve-wracking because these motherfuckers kept Indiana jonesing their way right up to the front lines. Sweet Potato helped a ton, luring the dragonflies to one lawnmower and stalling out the importers. Overall, pretty fun. On day 25, we have to survive with the most plants picked for us. Not that it matters because we run the usual three anyway. Also, for whatever reason, this level was stupidly easy. There were hardly any zombies at all, and when there was, it would be a maximum of like, three. I also find it funny that there was only one dragonfly throughout this entire stage. I'm not kidding. Level 1 was harder than this. Not much to say about day 26. It was kind of the most average thing you could possibly think of. Like it had zombies, but not many of them. I say that as if the dragonflies didn't suck up all of my mowers. Yeah, that's, that's all I got. Day 27 was fucked up. And you could probably guess why. Yeah, turquoise skull zombies. Even though potato mines are underground, that doesn't stop this asshole from obliterating them with its death laser. For those who don't know, if they end up stealing sun, then the beam will have further range and become overpowered. If you think about it, I basically can't even kill them. I need enough space for potato mines to prime up, but within that time frame, he will just blast them. So what can we do? Well, considering there's dragonflies, not much. I tried using Levitator, and it worked better. But there were way too many zombies to count, not to mention Levitator kept getting blasted too. I thought we were screwed when the final wave hit because there is way too much shit to deal with. However, as soon as that happened, I still had all my mowers, and only just managed to kill everything. Man, talk about a challenge. Day 28 brings back the traps. We can't even use potatoes, but even if we could, the trap tiles make this level so easy that it probably wouldn't matter. I mean, there were millions of importers, so probably not. Day 29 had literally every Lost City zombie and a shit ton of them, so it was a guaranteed levitator sweep. I wasn't paying attention, but an importer had dropped its tent, and I realized it was there when everything died, and levitators can't get rid of tents, forcing me to restart that entire level. So yeah. That was fun. Day 30 was even worse. The importers kept on placing tents far earlier than I anticipated. Not to mention, the turquoise skull zombies made it so I couldn't do shit. It was really just a waiting game for whenever my mowers would kill everything, just for them to reach my base again. I spent a really long time trying to do this level, but I couldn't, because of this asshole. So I used Teleportator Mine, because they can destroy those stupid tents. Also, there were mold colonies, but like, no one really cares about those. At last, final non-boss level, and it's very underwhelming. We can't even use our potatoes, and we gotta survive with the plants that are given to us. And I can guarantee you the game thought it was funny because of my hatred towards Toadstool. But hey, at least we get to use magnifying grass. Let's be honest, you either love this plant, or you don't. I'm certified to be one of its fans. I like you. And now, the final fight. Pretty ironic that it's a conveyor belt level. I do kind of like this boss fight, but it's way too easy. Mostly because Zomboss always activated the traps on the zombies that he spawned. 
There's not really too much to say. We mostly just kicked his ass with red stingers. But yeah, we destroyed him and get the key to the next world. So there we go. That just about does it for this one. Overall, Frostbite Caves and Lost City were mostly shit because there weren't many levels that gave us freedom. Stay tuned because it only gets worse from here. Far future will be a pain, and I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do about Dark Ages. But anyway, if you enjoyed, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, and I'll catch yous on the flip side. Peace.